Last week, we began our work on estimation. And the first thing that we looked at was the idea of an upper and lower bound. So let's uh, do a little practice with that. Let's take 33 times 37. So first we round down and we say, well, if we round down to the nearest tens, we get 30 times 30. So the lower bound, it, it has to be more than 30 times 30, 900. And for the upper bound, to get the upper bound, we'll round up. So we'll say, well, if we round up to 40, both of these up to 40, then we multiplied 1,600 so that we know our answer has to be between 900 and 1600. And let's just take another example where the numbers aren't in the same tens like 72 and 98. And so we round 72 down to 70 and 98 down to 90. Since both of these numbers are smaller than what we're multiplying, we know that that has to be less than what we're, our, we're going to get as our answer. 6,300 has to be less than what we're going to get. And if we round both of them up, we round 72 up to 80 and 98 up to 100, we're going to get 8,000, which we know has to be more. So our answer is going to be between these two. Yeah, perhaps you're not finding this very useful, but it does become very useful once we start in with multiplying numbers with decimals. And so we use a similar strategy. So let's say we're going to do 3.3 times 3.7. So we say, well, we can round down to 3 times 3. So we know that our answer is going to be more than 9. And we round up to 4 and 4. And we know that our answer is going to be less than 16. So the nice thing about this is we can take some harder problem, 7 and 53 hundredths times 12 and 72 hundredths, and do the same calculation with our lower bound, saying, well, we'll round down to 7 and 12, so we know that our lower bound is 84. So our answer has to be more than that. And our upper bound, so we just round up, so we say, well, we'll round up to 8 and round up to 13. So 80 plus 24, 104. And so you're saying, well, still, this isn't very useful, but let me uh, show you what you can do then. So I've started to multiply this out. 12, 8, 1 to carry, 6, 7, 5, 1 to carry, 9. And I look at this mess, right, and I think, oh my gosh, what, what should I do? Okay. And you could try out your rules, and so there are some rules that you can use. But the easy thing is, well, is basically 7 times 12 is my lower bound. So I know that this 9, 5, it must be 95. The decimal point must go here because that's between 84 and 104. I don't have to m m bother with the other uh, techniques that I know for figuring out where the decimal point is. And that's a very handy thing to know. Let's continue with the lower bound and upper bound idea here when multiplying three digit by three digit. So think about the extreme case. So the smallest three digit number is 100. So 100 times 100 would be the least we can get when we do three digit by three digit. And you could say, well, the biggest number is 999, three digit times 999. But what we'll do is we'll change that into a thousand times a thousand and just say that we know it has to be less than that. Well, a thousand times a thousand, three zeros plus three zeros is six zeros, so it's one and six zeros. So we know that we're not going to get to a thousand, and here we have one and four zeros, we have ten thousand. So this is our range. Well, how much is that? Well, we have here the smallest we can get is five digits when we multiply three digit by three digit. And the most we can get, we can't quite get to seven, right? So we're either going to get five or six. So this is the first seven digit number. And we can't get there because 999 times 999 has to be less than a thousand 
times a thousand. And soon we'll learn how much less that we'll learn in the last week of the course, okay, which is in two more meetings.